You have to have been living under a rock to not be aware of the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. In this video, I will show you how the Watchtower is connected to the story in... Thanks for stopping by on YouTube. I'm known as XJW Curious, and my friends call me Pete. Just in case you were living under a rock, let me give you the basic backstory. Back in 2005, a 14-year-old girl told her parents that Jeffrey Epstein had molested her at a Palm Beach mansion. In 2006, police charged Epstein and two others with unlawful sex acts with persons under the age of consent. The Palm Beach State Attorney then referred the case to a grand jury. In July, the FBI opened a federal investigation. In 2007, Epstein agreed to a plea deal where he would plead guilty to two counts of felony prostitution. After serving most of his sentence, Epstein was released. In 2015, several civil lawsuits were filed claiming Epstein and his friend Jelaine Maxwell were involved in international sex trafficking. On July 6, 2019, Epstein was arrested by federal agents. Later, 20 federal law enforcement officers enter his New York residence to execute search warrants, according to the New York Post. Epstein pled not guilty on charges of trafficking dozens of minors between 2002 and 2005. On August 10, he is found dead in his prison cell while awaiting trial. His friend Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested in July of 2020 for recruiting underage girls for Epstein and faced six counts. In December of 2021, she was found guilty of five of the six counts. During the trial, it was revealed that Maxwell was the main recruiter of the underage girls. Four other women were named as recruiters, but have yet to be arrested. It was a sensational and a horrible story. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Pete, how could the Watchtower be involved with this case? How strong of a connection could it possibly be? I found an article in the Daily Mail, a newspaper in the UK, where Ghislaine Maxwell is from. In the article, they speak to an elderly couple whose daughter is one of the four named recruiters. The elderly couple are longtime Jehovah's Witnesses. Their daughter, Sarah Kellen, is a disfellowshipped witness. Here are some of the excerpts from the story. I will put a link in the description box below to the original story. It's worth a read. Thomas and Mary Kellen, both Jehovah's Witnesses, told DailyMail.com in an exclusive interview that their daughter was naive and vulnerable when she met the billionaire pedophile and could now pay a heavy price for being swept into his vile world. After Maxwell, I think Sarah's next, said 74-year-old Mary, fighting back tears as she revealed fears the youngest of her five children could be arrested by federal agents at any moment. What happened to all those girls is horrendous, but I do feel that Sarah was also a victim. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I can see she was maneuvered or brainwashed. Is it just me, or is it amazingly ironic she can say her daughter was brainwashed by Epstein and Maxwell, yet didn't think she was when she was a witness? But I digress. With Epstein having hanged himself in jail, federal authorities in New York are said to be closing in on his alleged accomplices, including a coterie of glamorous female aides who managed his appointments with underage girls. His former lover, Ghislaine Maxwell, 
A British socialite with links to some of the world's richest and most influential people is already behind bars and has been denied bail as she awaits her trial on sex trafficking charges next July. But four more women named in the legal documents as potential co-conspirators are yet to face arrest. Chief among them, Kellen, who spent around a decade working as Epstein's personal assistant. But according to her devoutly religious parents, Sarah Kellen should be treated as a victim rather than a co-conspirator, because she too was groomed and manipulated after falling out with her family and going to work for Epstein in her teens. Her parents insist they knew virtually nothing about their daughter's duties because they were became estranged from her around the time she took the job, aged 18 or 19. But with concerns growing over her behavior, Kellen was disfellowshipped, a disciplinary sanction whereby she was expelled from the church and ostracized by its members, including her own family. The next statement shows the cult mentality. Trigger warning. It puts us in a position where we could not have an association with her unless it was really necessary. Talk about brainwashed. Apparently, the desire to be loyal to men was more important than their love of their daughter. Or at least that's how they were indoctrinated by the cult. Her parents continue. I think she was manipulated by Epstein due to her age and the circumstances. In my opinion, she's a victim just as much as some of the others. Let me see if I have this straight so far. She was manipulated due to her age. Yet she was even younger when she was baptized. I don't suppose there was any manipulation involved in her choice then, right? Sarah got disfellowshipped. Her family shunned her. With no support network or family to fall back on, she took a dangerous path. She sure sounds like a victim to me. She was a victim of the Watchtower's dangerous indoctrination of her parents and their harmful shunning policy. The next statement drips with irony. She was told what to do and what to say. Sounds a lot like the Watchtower. Members are told what to do and what to say, and underage children are regularly abused. What's the difference between Epstein's operation and the Watchtowers? Epstein didn't use religion as a front. The article now sheds more light onto Sarah's involvement with Epstein's organization. While her work remained a mystery to her family, it was finally laid bare in the 2008 sweetheart deal that allowed Epstein to spend just 13 months in jail much of it out on barely supervised work release, in exchange for pleading guilty to Florida state charges of unlawfully paying a teenage girl for sex. The controversial non-prosecution agreement extended similar immunity to four potential co-conspirators, including Sarah Kellen and fellow executive assistants Adriana Ross, Leslie Groff, and Nadia Markinkova. It meant Kellen could not face charges in Florida, despite multiple girls describing how she would book them for massages and greet them as they arrived at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion before escorting them upstairs and laying out massage oils. According to police reports, one victim recalled Kellen and Maxwell instructing her on how to please their depraved boss. Others claimed the pair had warned them not to speak out about what was happening. Don't speak out about what's happening? That's a watchtower tactic all the way. 
The lawyer for some of the girls said this about Sarah. Sarah was really running that organization, bringing girls and getting them in and out of the Palm Beach home. Spencer T. Coven, a lawyer representing several accusers, told the New York Times. She was also well compensated. Epstein divulged in a 2005 interview that he paid his closest assistants $200,000 a year. How many abusers pay their victims $200,000 a year? I know Watchtower has paid more in a single settlement, but Epstein had her on salary. Just so you realize exactly how involved Sarah really was, check out what the article says next. Kellen traveled on Epstein's private jet, the Lolita Express, with former President Bill Clinton on at least 11 flights between 2002 and 2003, according to publicly available flight logs. Kellen declined to speak with DailyMail.com, but provided a statement through her spokeswoman, Tracy Schmaller. When Sarah was targeted by Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, she, like many of their victims, was struggling financially and emotionally, the statement read. Sarah was an isolated young woman, having lost the only family she'd ever known, and been divorced by an older man, and then cast out of her Jehovah's Witness community. Mary says she tries to block what's happening out of her mind, because she expects her daughter will soon be arrested in the New York case, which is not subject to the Florida sweetheart deal. Epstein wasn't the sort of sex pervert you read about that kidnaps girls and keeps them in chains for years, she told DailyMail.com. These girls went home every night and willingly came back. He didn't need to chain them up because he had emotional and mental control. Again, the parallel to the Watchtower is eerie. The Watchtower doesn't need to chain up its members either. They control their members emotionally and mentally through their shunning policy, which is what led poor Sarah into this lifestyle. Thomas and Mary say they would gladly welcome their daughter back into the fold tomorrow, but she would need to re-enter their church and demonstrate a genuine commitment to their faith. The underage girls trafficked by Epstein and Maxwell are the clear victims here. While Sarah started out as a victim, she climbed to the top echelon of the Epstein organization. Epstein and Maxwell were to the Epstein organization as the governing body is to the Watchtower organization. But Sarah, in the Epstein organization, is like Ralph Walls, a helper to the governing body. How ironic, then, that Ralph cites this scripture in a talk on JW.org titled, In Difficult Times, Jehovah Always Comforts. A scripture that's become familiar to Jehovah's people is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Praised be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of tender mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our trials, so that we may be able to comfort others in any sort of trial with the comfort that we receive from God. Jehovah's Witnesses will say Sarah turned her back on Jehovah and doesn't deserve comfort. That is an arrogant statement at best. Who are you to judge Sarah? Again, I digress. Reading the article, it doesn't sound like Jehovah is providing much comfort to Sarah's parents. Maybe that's why they don't heed the advice at the end of the scripture. So that we may be able to comfort others in any sort of trial with the comfort that we receive from God. 
Poor Sarah. She chose to join two organizations in her life. Both were deceitful, both were dangerous, and ultimately both were deadly. With a comment below, tell me what part of the story did you find the most surprising? And which part was the least surprising? Let me know. I like reading your comments.